Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. I have to solder these two parts together, but I ran into a problem last week. There was a part that came loose in here, so I had to pull that out, clean up the solder. Then I had to file this part down. This is how these parts are supposed to go together. This is the cork barrel, and it gets soldered onto the brace that's on the inner hand side. And then this part goes there, and then the slide goes inside of there and into this part. But there's a big gap there, and obviously... This will not work too well if the trombone is this way. I will show you what I did. I made a little ring, and I'm going to solder that onto the cork barrel. It's the same diameter as the cork barrel. And then the inside diameter is the same diameter as the slide tube. This piece of metal is thick enough to provide some support for these pieces. And also there's a lot of stress on this because the bell attaches to this. So these parts need to be fairly strong. If they're weak, then it's just going to break off. I do not want that to happen. So I made a fairly thick piece of metal to solder that together. And how I made it was I took a part for a door. A guy came into my shop a, a few years ago and he gave me lots of parts for, a, for doors and things like that that he had laying around some brass parts. And what I did is I drilled a hole into that and then I cut out the ring out of that. So this is the part that it actually came out of. It used to look like this and now it looks like this. But I drilled a hole into there so that it would fit into the slide tube. And then I put it on the lathe and I cut this part out. First I'm going to silver solder these two parts together. Here's the silver solder. It's a lot thinner than the soft solder and it also melts at a lot higher temperature than the soft solder. Because silver solder melts at a higher temperature, it needs a special kind of flux because the other kind of flux would just melt away after a little while after you heated it up. So what I'm going to do is put the flux on the two parts. The flux keeps the metal from oxidizing so that the solder can flow. I have this little tool. It holds the parts together when I solder them. Now I'm going to line these parts so that when I solder them they are soldered together correctly. And sometimes this takes a little work to do because it has to be perfect. Because once you silver solder a part it's hard to change it so you want it to be right the first time. If it's soft soldered together then it's a lot easier to unsolder it, clean up the solder, and do it again. It still takes some work, but it's a lot easier. When you're silver soldering, it's a lot harder to do that. I'm just looking at it all the way around. Okay, it looks good, so I'm ready to solder. I'm heating up the parts. What I'm going to do is tack solder this. And what tack soldering is, is where you just get part of it soldered, and then you finish it up. So I'm just going to tack solder right over there, okay. There, that's good. So this is not soldered all the way around, it's just held together. And the reason I do not want to solder it all the way around is I do not want to solder the tool to the part. So what I'm going to do is wait for this to cool so I can touch it, and then I'm going to take the this clip off of here, and then I will just solder it on with the one clip holding it. Now the parts are out in the open so I can solder them better. And it should be almost up to temperature. Okay, there it's flowing in there now. I don't want to heat it up too much because I don't want it to come apart. So, there I might have a little blob of solder left on there when I'm done, but that's okay. I'm just going to file that down. Now I'm going to move my way around to the other side. If you want to watch a video on silver soldering, I will leave a link in the description below to that video. Uh, I do not do a lot of silver soldering. Usually, so, usually I soft solder, but sometimes you need to silver solder. Silver soldering provides a lot stronger bond. The only problem is that you need to make sure that it is not anywhere near a soft solder joint because then it can melt the soft solder and make a big mess of it. So I think it's done all the way around. I'm seeing, yeah, I see solder all the way around. There is a little too much solder in a couple spots there and I will need to file that down. But it looks like it's going to be a strong solder joint so that is good. Now I can move on to the next step.
There's the cork barrel, and the slide tube fits right into there, like that, like it's supposed to, so that is good. And now what I have to do is solder this piece onto here. There's a problem though, I need to silver solder these two pieces together, and I should have the slide in here when I do it so that it lines up. The problem is that there's chrome plating on this slide, and chrome plating can actually burn if it gets too hot, and this is going to get very hot. So I'm a little hesitant to solder with this tube on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on top of there. I'm going to tack solder a tiny little spot, and then I'm going to check it out. If it does line up right, then I'm just going to continue soldering all the way around this part. If it does not line up, then I will either unsolder it or I might be able to bend it a little bit if there's just a tiny bit of solder on it and then finish soldering. So again, I'm going to put some of the flux on the two parts. Now I'm going to line these parts up as good as I can. I'm just going to set it right on top of there. Try to make sure that they are equal distance apart. Okay. And I can also look inside. It looks like it's good. I think it is ready to solder. Now I'm going to heat it up and put just a little bit of solder on there. It does take a while to heat up the metal for silver solder joints. Let's see how close we are. I do not want to move it. When I put the solder on, I do not want to move the part at all. So I'm being very careful not to move it. Okay, the solder. The solder melted, but it didn't go into there. Let's see. Come on, go into there. Okay. Yep, there we go. Very good. There's just a little bit of solder that went into there. There's enough to hold it so that it doesn't fall apart, but I think I can still shift it a little bit if I need to. There actually is a tool that is made to line up the cork barrel to the slide when you are soldering them. The way it works is you put these into the cork barrel like that. You want them to go an equal distance into the cork barrel, and if they do, then you know that the cork barrel is lined up, and then you can solder the tube onto there. The only problem this time is that I cannot put the tube into the cork barrel to solder it. I will use this set of tools to solder this onto the slide when I soft solder it on, but I cannot use it for silver soldering. It's been a few minutes, so let's see if I can touch this. It's st uh, still a little too hot to touch. The part is cooled off enough so that I can touch it. Now I'm going to put this slide into there. We'll see how it lines up. Well, I think it's going to be okay. Let's see. It is a little bit off, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to bend that. Okay, yeah, it did bend without any problem. Now it should be good, so I'm going to finish soldering it. I'm going to go to the opposite side and solder it there first so that it does not melt that side. I want this side to stay where it is while I solder the other side, and I do not want this side to melt. So I'm just going to... So I'm going to start with this side and then work my way around. I have to heat it up to the melting point. But I do not want to go too far and melt the other side. I'm trying to be careful and control the temperature. Once I get it soldered on two sides, it should be fine and it should hold up well. Okay, the solder is on there. I'm waiting for it to flow into there. Okay. Now the part on top has more mass than the part on the bottom, so the part on the bottom is going to want to heat up first. Okay, there it's going in. Uh, I'm going to heat up the other side. Let that flow in. Now I need to turn it, but I do not want to touch it because it's going to be very hot, so I'll just turn it with the pliers. And then continue soldering. Again, I don't think this is a perfect solder joint, so I will need to file down some of the uh, the solder. And you cannot heat and wipe this solder. On soft solder, you can heat and wipe it. It's a very easy job to clean up solder. But with silver solder, you need to file it down. You file or grind it down. Either of them are either of them take a little bit of work. And grinding 
will not work on this solder joint because of the way it's shaped. So I'm going to have to file it down. The best way to do it though is just not to make a mess in the first place and just make it a very good solder joint. But sometimes that's a little difficult to do though. Since this melts at such a high temperature, usually a very small place on the tube is up to temperature at the right time or at the same time. So there's m probably not a lot of danger of heating up the whole thing at once because if the whole thing melts at the same time then it can fall apart. If the back side stays solid and then the front side is melted it'll stay together but when the whole thing is melted at once that's when things shift around or they can fall off. But usually when you silver solder that is not as big of a danger. I'm just waiting for this to cool off. I think it's good. There's the part. Let's see how it lines up now. It should be fine, but I don't know if anything shifted. I hope not. I really hope this is good. Let's see. It looks pretty close. Not exact, but pretty close. I think I should be able to bend it just a little bit. I think, I think that's going to work. Now I just have to clean up this rather messy solder joint. I like my solder joints to be nice and neat and clean the first time. Well, obviously this is not one of the best solder joints I've ever done. So I'm going to file down the excess solder and buff it, and then it should be as good as new. I filed down the clumps of solder, and I also buffed it out. So now it's ready to go onto the slide tube. Before I solder it, I'm going to put these in here. That looks good, and now I'm going to solder this. This solder joint's probably going to be a little bit harder to do because I'm going to have to put the solder in right on the edge of the tubing, and that's a harder solder joint. So probably will make a mess, so after I'm done, I'm just going to have to clean up the solder, but that's not that hard to do, though. I'm heating up the metal, and now I'm going to put some flux in there, and yes, this is flux. It is not valve oil. I just use a valve oil bottle for it. Okay, now I have to get solder inside, in between those tubes. Okay, and it is going in, which is good. I want the solder to flow in between the tubes because I do not want it just at the end of the tube. What I'm doing is I'm moving the heat over this way, and that will draw the solder into the tubing. Okay, I think... That's probably enough solder. I don't want too much solder either. There is a little bit of excess solder on there, but I thought that was probably going to happen. But I am going to clean that up, and it's not that hard to clean up. So as soon as it cools off, I'm going to clean that up. I have a little trombone spray bottle with ammonia and water in it, and I'm going to spray that on there. What that does is it neutralizes the flux, because the flux is acidic and that neutralizes it so that it doesn't keep eating away at the metal. I'm going to put this tube back in here and then I'm going to clean up the solder and I'll show you how to do that. I heat up the solder then when it's up to temperature I wipe it away with a cloth like that. The solder is all cleaned up. The solder is all cleaned up on the outside. Now to clean it up on the inside, I'm going to use... The solder is all clean... The solder is all clean... The solder is all cleaned up on the outside. Now to clean it up on the inside. This is called a solder scraper, but I rarely use it for scraping solder. I am right now. And that's because I'm using it to clean out the inside of a tube. Usually you do not get solder on the inside of a tube. However, on a solder joint like this, it was bound to get in there. So that is all done. I would really like to continue and solder this together, but it's getting very late and I need to get home and edit this video. Next week I hope to get the inner and outer slide tubes soldered back together. And I also hope to get the crook soldered onto the end of this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.